Hi, and welcome to my guide of the quest Curse of Erev. The quest requirements are Defender of Varrock and Troll Romance. Stat requirements are 37 Slayer, 58 Strength, 61 Agility, 62 Range and Thieving, and 64 Mining. Items needed are 3 Dwellberries that you can buy in the food store of the Grand Tree, a Ring of Life, any kind of pickaxe, and any kind of crossbow that you can use with a myth grapple. And some insulated boots. At least one stamina potion, depending on how much weight reducing clothing that you own. And some food, armor, weapon and potions to be able to kill a combat 141. Which is basically just a free kill. You can use any combat style of your liking, but it is weakest to crush. For the end boss of combat 339, the easiest way to defeat that one is by using simply bolts and a good crossbow. I'm going to be banking before fighting the Comet 339. And finally also have like two empty inventory slots. For the teleports, three to the user. The closest teleport would be to use the fairing code DLQ. One teleport to Trollheim. You could use a Trollheim teleport or Gommel's Hilt to God Wars Dungeon Entrance. One teleport to any bank if you want to prepare for the final boss fight, I'm going to Ferox Enclave. One teleport to the Odd Old Man, which is located between Ferox and the Temple of Patrodomus. I think the closest teleport would be to use the Ring of Elements to the Earth Altar, or use the Hot Air Balloon or the Lumberyard Teleport, or simply a Verrock Teleport. And finally, also one teleport away after the quest is completed. Where we can start this quest is south of the Ruins of Users, located just east-northeast of the Ferring Code DLQ. Here, let's talk to LEF White and select option 1 to start the quest. After speaking to him, if we zoom out of our minimap, we'll see a dungeon sign on the hill just south. This is a tomb that we'll need to enter next. and enter the entry. Once inside, let's head southeast to the end, to the end of this big alcove, and there should find two skeletons. Search the southern one for a key. Next, let's make our way back to the entrance, and then go east into the big central room. Close to the northern wall, there will find another skeleton. Search it for a second Mabasta key. Where we have the second key, let's go southeast. But watch out before turning your corner. Search the odd markings on the wall. And these have a quite high fail rate. Even at level 99 thieving, you could fail these markings. Just search the markings again until you successfully cross. Then pull the lever and make our way north. Do the same thing in the northeastern corner. Search the odd markings, pull the lever, say yes. And search the odd markings back to the imposing doors. Open the imposing doors to start our first boss fight. Let's defeat the come at 141 Golem Guard. Use Protect from Melee at all times to negate all damage. But when the screen shakes, run away from the golem, as it will deal up to 30 damage to you every time it reaches you. This damage cannot be negated unless by walking away from the golem.
All right, once we have defeated the Golem Guard, let's climb down the stairs a bit further west, and it's time to do a small puzzle. Let's go a bit west to find an entire room filled with colorful tiles. We must make our way to the other side of the room by walking over either the blue and green tiles or by walking the red and beige ones, though the beige ones are called yellow. Maybe zoom out and see what kind of path would be the best one for you. I think, in my opinion, would be to use the yellow and red ones. It is possible to move from red to, for example, blue, but doing so you will take some damage. Once you've made it across, let's enter the next room and let's go a bit north and search the shelves to find another item. Next, go north into the southern room and there we'll find three murals. Inspect the southern one to know what we'll need to do next. Before leaving, let's use this jar of canopic jar oil on some dwell berries. Then use a jar on a ring of life and if you're not able to do this, then make sure that you inspect the Southern Moral. Once you've done this step, let's return back to the quest star to LEF. The fastest way would be to teleport to any fairing and use the fairing code DLQ. If you didn't bring any teleports, then you will need to backtrack to the entrance of the dungeon. Tomb. Once we have returned to Elias White, let's talk to him. And select option 3, it doesn't even matter to be honest. Next, let's make our way to Trollheim. And where we'll need to go next is the same location where we've been during the Troll Romance quest. From the Trollheim teleport, run north and follow that path to the Crying Troll Child from Desert Treasure 1. And from that child, go west, enter the caves, and follow that cave system using Protect from Melee when you're passing the Ice Trolls to the other side, to the northwestern part. Let's exit this cave system and run east to the next one. Enter that cave. In this cave, let's go a bit north until we are blocked by some rubble. Click on the northeastern bubbly rock to mine it from this side. Then go south until you see another bubbly rock that you can mine. Mine it to be able to go through 
and follow the path to the eastern side of the rock that you've just mined. Mine it to clear it and follow the path north. And from this point forward, we will need to make our way to the eastern side of the caves. But there will be some more landslides with bubbly rocks that we can mine. To complete this puzzle, we simply have to mine every bubbly rock on every side that we can. And that is basically the only way to it. Mine every bubbly rubble until you're able to mine the next one. Simply mine all the rubble from every side until this cave system is cleared from rubble.
Okie doke, once you are done mining. In this nice looking room, let's climb up the stairs and talk to Aerith. He has a combat level, but don't be afraid, you won't fight him for now. Next, after he has disappeared, we'll need to enter the eastern room. Let's enter it and south search the tapestry, or inspect, search. Next, let's make our way back to Elias White at the quest start south of the ruins of User. Oh, lucky impling. All right, here at the quest star, let's talk to him and deliver the base plans. After we've spoken to him, we'll need to teleport to prepare for the final boss fight. Compared to the golem, this one is going to be a bit more difficult. So I'm going to Ferrox Enclave to restore my stats and prepare. The items that we can deposit are the weapons that we've used to kill the golem, the crush one, as well as the pickaxe. What we will still need are the canopic jar oil, as well as the base key, a myth grapple and a crossbow, and the insulated boots. For the recommendations, one stamina potion would still be helpful, as well as an anti-venom plus or multiple antidotes, as the boss will spawn some zombies that leave a trial of venom. If we stand on them, then we'll get venomed. Since we are bringing a crossbow to be able to use the myth grapple, I also think the best way to defeat the boss is by simply using ranged with bolts. This is going to be my gear that I'm going to be using, and for the rest of the inventory is just going to be some good food and potions. Make sure that you bring like at least one full prayer potion, that should be enough. I do suggest you to leave two inventory slots open. Alright, once you think you are ready, let's make our way to the earth altar, the lumber yard, or just to Varrock. And let's make our way to the dungeon of the Defender of Varrock quest, located just next to the odd old man. Once again, make sure that you have your Myth Grapple and your Insulated Boots. Alright, west of the Odd Old Man, let's talk to Elias White and select option 1 that you are ready. Let's climb down and use Protect from Melee and follow the dungeon to the end. We've already unlocked the gates during the previous quest, Defender of Varrock, so just simply open the gates. I think most zombies use melee, so... Just tank the ranged hits and use protect from melee. Once you've opened the fourth and the final gate, you may turn off your Protect from Melee and head into the Northeastern Kitchen area. Open that gate and south you'll find a pipe. Make sure that you equip your insulated boots, else you will get taken damage up to... Well, I got taken damage like 13th. Next, once you are here, let's head south to the other side to the Caged Killer Watt. Next to the Caged Killer Watt, you will find a pipe that we can squeeze through. Do so.
And once we have done that, head inside the southern room and search the left table, the right table, and the small chest a bit south. Next, let's read the code key and remember or write down in your chat box your random four letter code. Once you've remembered or written down your four letter random code, let's exit, go north, back to the pipe, and on the other side, you'll find a metal door. Open it, and you'll see this puzzle. Remember the first letter of your random code? Then click on strip 1 and type it in there and then enter. Then remember the second letter of your random code? Click on strip 2, type that letter and enter. And do the same with number 3 and number 4. Next, in your strip number 1, it will reveal one number. Use the up or down arrow until you have that number that is in strip number 1. Then click on the right arrow to enter and do the same thing with strip number 2. Have that number and then enter the right arrow. Strip number 3, enter and strip number 4, enter to unlock this metal door. Let's open the metal doors, equip our crossbow and myth grapple, and then grapple onto the pipe above you. Next, go into the next room, but once you click on the pedestal with the Heart of Aerith, this will trigger the boss fight. So get ready, get your stats up, maybe drink a ranging potion, and take from the pedestal. The boss fight of this quest is against Aerith. Even though Aerith can sometimes hit through prayer, sometimes he doesn't. When Aerith is twitching and is getting ready to throw his axe at you, move to the side or behind him to make sure that you do not get hit. And the second special is that Aerith will spawn one or two zombies. These will leave a trail of venom. So I suggest you to kill them as fast as possible. Or simply wear a serpentine helm. If you use range, then you have a 100% success rate to one-shot these zombies. If you use melee, then you do not and you will probably be standing on some venom. That is why I suggest you to kill Aerith also with ranged. Though, you could also switch to melee just for Aerith. Okie do, when Aerith has been defeated, this is the quest completed. And congratulations, you've completed the Curse of Aerith quest. You are awarded with 2 quest points, access to the fort, as well as 40,000 experience in mining, thieving, and agility. No, I did not forget my teleport away after the quest is completed. Who would do something like that? 
By the way, you may destroy the Majorat nodes. Okay, thank you, bye bye.